It's good to see all of you people here today in the Lord's house. It's awesome. You know, uh, one of the things that bothers me is that this world is on the path of destruction. And people have lost their values for life. But we thank God for this church and for this pastor because when we come here, we learn about our Savior. And one of the things that we learn is that our Savior loves us. When we think of Calvary, we think of God's love for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the gift of Calvary. We thank you for your precious love. And Lord, we, we just thank you for just pouring out on us, Lord, your spirit. And Lord Jesus Christ, give us strength from day to day that you may receive all the glory and all the praise. We thank you for our pastor, Lord, who preaches the word. We're so thankful for the word and so thankful for our preacher. We ask for thine anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. And is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Praise God. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Of all blessings and honor and glory, is he worthy of this? He is. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And does the Father truly love us? He does. And does the Spirit move among us? He does. And is Jesus our Messiah? Hold forever those he loves. He does. And does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, Hallelujah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of all blessings and honor and glory? Is He worthy? 
Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is, he is, is he worthy, is he worthy, he is, he is, he is worthy, he is worthy, he Step on the other side When the saints of old Standing with a greeting To welcome us across the tide We're going to lift glad hands together And go shout and go through the land And when you think it's just a minute It'll happen all over again Forgetting where we've been Now we're standing on the top of Zion Triumphant over sin First the angels will stop singing Then the joy bells start ringing And prepare you all of heaven When the saints go marching in Oh, won't that be a hallelujah meeting When we step on the other side And the saints of old Standing with a greeting To welcome us across the tide We're gonna lift glad hands together And go shouting all through the land And when you think you touch the body It'll happen all over again For shouting since many long years ago I got more than just religion Woo, Since yeah. Jesus saved my soul I got the way down to each salvation Like a mortal tongue can tell And the standing invitation To a hallelujah spell Oh, won't that be a hallelujah meeting When we step on the other side And the saints of old Standing with a greeting To welcome us across the tide We're gonna lift glad hands together and go shouting all through the land And when you think you stress the body it, it'll happen all over again And when you think you stress the body it, it'll happen all over again My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling eternally No more pain nor death can enter there feel like a traveling, traveling on. on Yes, I feel like a traveling, traveling on I feel like traveling, traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling, traveling on It's glittering tires, the sun outshines I feel like a traveling on that heavenly mansion shall be mine I feel like traveling on Yes, I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on Hands, praise God this morning. And the horse, awesome on that piano over there. Amen. But you got two hands. Slap them together. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, now. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling, traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling, traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling, traveling on. I 
feel like traveling, traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling, traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling, traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. In our continuing walk through the book of Mark, as we have been on since last year, here we are in June, and we're still in the book of Mark, and we will be done when we're done. But um, we're going through, and we're looking at every word and every event that happened. We're seeing this is all leading up to this week in the scripture in the life of Jesus was a week that was headed to the cross. We've seen Jesus cleanse the temple. We've seen the issues that have happened. We've seen the debates. We've heard the questions. We've seen all the things that have been thrown out. And now we come to this point that Jesus will speak to his disciples. The end is near. Mark 13, 1 through 13. Today in our continuing on this path up to the cross, we come to what is called in the Bible as the Olivet Discourse. I have been to the Mount of Olives and stood there, and what a moving. I did a little live video yesterday, and, um, and I've talked about, over the last several days, about what happened at the Mount of Olives. And also there's a futuristic event that's going to happen there. But here we find the Olivet Discourse, and it's called, actually it's called the Little Apocalypse, the Book of Revelation in Miniature. And so Jesus takes this, and you'll find that these scriptures also coincide with Mark, or rather Matthew 24 and 25. So some do not believe Jesus was a prophet. But to accept his prophecy is to affirm his deity. And you've got to understand that. Understand this. Only God knows what the end will be. Now I know the speculation. And I know this, these portions of scripture has been even controversial of some sort. Because it deals with about the coming of the Lord. And then people talking about date setting. And we've seen all those things occur. But there is no date to set. Because Jesus knows and God knows the date when he will tell his son to go get his children. So this idea today of date setting is heresy. Don't believe it. But you've got to understand that only God knows when the end will be. And so what are we given? We're given to, pre to prepare for that day. You've got to first prepare in salvation. You've got to know Jesus as your personal Savior. You have to invite him into your heart and your life. As Jesus told Nicodemus, you've got to be born again. Friend, it's not on church. It's not on congregations. It's not on religion. It's not on rituals. It's not what the Pope said. It's not what the Book of Mormon has said. It's not what Mohammed has said. It is not what Buddha has said. It's what Jesus has declared. And that's the fact of the coming of the Son of God. Amen. The Olivet Discourse is not grounds for speculation about the end. For it shall happen. But is the end really the beginning and I think that it is because this world as we know it today is not going to continue as it is going this world is headed on a collision course with God God forbid that we continue as we're going on the slippery slope downward and that we have reached pretty much a low in our nation and as a world Jesus spoke these words to prepare the disciples. And I believe he also spoke these words. To prepare us. For the future. There is a future. Not so much the future in your political. Or your uh, job setting. Or your economics. Or your home life. Or your kids. And all these things. There is a future. That one day this world. Will no longer be as it is today. Amen. There is coming a day. When the king of kings shall come and rapture out the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the redeemed of the Lord shall go to be with him in that day 
the redeemed will leave, the unredeemed will stay. And there will be seven years of tribulation on this earth. A time of tribulation, of trouble, as no man has ever known. Beyond your imagination or even your expectation. Our finite minds cannot really grasp the magnitude of God's almighty hand when he pours out wrath and fury and judgment upon the face of this earth. So the dates of the disciples were asking questions about dates and times. The question is not when the end will come. The right question is, will you endure till the end? Amen. Think about that. I believe, as the scripture declares, this is not about losing your salvation when he talks about enduring to the end. It's about persevering. It's about standing true and faithful to the cause of Christ. It's about believing, thus saith the Lord, and what is written in his word, and then living out. We are to live out the scriptures in our lives every day. The last days, the last days. I believe emphatically, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I've studied eschatology for 30 some years. And I believe with what I have gained in, in studying and learning the scriptures, that the last days are these days. And they are hard days, full of deception, full of even destruction, full of downfall, but also it will be full of deliverance. It's time for alarm, church. It's time that we get a house in order. It is time we, the people of God, no longer stand for the things of this world and accept it. It's no longer the time that we get hung up and rung up and strung out on the political garbage that is happening in our nation and other nations of today. These things will rob you of the joy of the Lord. These things will get your mind off of the Word, off of Christ and off, off of the great event that is about to happen. And we then find ourselves, if you're not careful, you will put all your attention and all your mindset into politics and politicians, but you will ignore the great deliverer who is Jesus Christ. Amen. We better get our minds on Christ. We better get our hearts in the Word. And we better get our feet busy for serving God. Amen. We should be alert. I was in the Air Force and I learned about being on alert in being in preparation, in being prepared. We know this is necessary. And it's time we prepare to meet our God as Amos declared in the Scriptures. Alert about what is happening in the world and we should not be alarmed by what is happening in the world if you know anything about the pages of God's word you know these things are going to happen this is a part of the plan of God it cannot be altered it cannot be manipulated it cannot be changed Christianity is a battleground not a playground you must be dressed and ready for battle. And you can read in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God. We are to be prepared in every aspect and element of our life. We are to be vigilant. Because our adversary the devil goes about as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. There are two reasons that we will be ready. Dressed. Really honestly. And I like this way of thinking today. When you take Ephesians 6 and apply it to your life and you put on the whole armor of God, you know what you really are dressed for? You are dressed for success. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Two reasons. One, the world is against you. If they are against Christ, they are against you who profess to know Christ as your Savior. 
This world is not your home. Don't get attached to it. This world is against you. The schemes of this world are against you. And secondly, you may find this a little disturbing. Your family will be against you. What do you mean, Pastor? You cannot trust your family if your family does not trust Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. These verses actually give us hope of salvation. And I find great hope because you know what? I believe in the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. We persevere in faith because death does not have the last word. Hallelujah. The sting of death has been removed and the victory of the grave has been taken away. Amen. Death does not have the last word. For if you're in Christ, you're alive. And even if you die in this world as it is now, you have a promise that you'll be taken instantly into the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Oh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So understand this. Death does not have the last word. But I'm glad to tell you also that there's coming a day when, thank God, the grave will have to give up the bodies of the redeemed. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. God will keep you when you can't even keep yourself. Amen. Church, listen. Being confident of this very thing, the Word of God says, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 and 6. Now the Word of God. Join me if you have your Bible. If not, just listen attentively at Mark 13, 1 through 13. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and saith unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? These great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, what shall these things be? Or when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you, friend, let me stop right here and tell you, there is a lot of deception today in our world. And I hate to tell you, it's coming from churches. It's coming from pulpits. It's coming through airwaves. It's coming through media sources. There is a lot of deception. You better make sure that you know the word today. Because if you'll put the word in you and you will receive it and absorb it and live it, you'll know what is deception You'll know what is heresy, and you'll know what is the truth. Amen. Amen. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not yet, shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom there shall be earthquakes in diverse places many places troubled places and there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginning of sorrows friend we are already past the beginning of sorrows but take heed to yourselves 
For they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. That's interesting. For Titus says, The gospel hath appeared unto all men. There is no excuse. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye or you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, we need the Holy Ghost to speak through us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the brethren shall betray the brother. The, now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the fathers, the son, and the children shall rise up against the parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Verse 13. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It seems Mark 13 is labeled with the fact we're going somewhere. The reason that we're going somewhere is because we know someone who has delivered us. Amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives and Jesus opens up he describes the destruction of the temple and the destruction of Jerusalem. And Jesus describes even his own second coming. Mingled in this is also the second coming of Christ. We as a church are looking for the rapture coming. The second coming is during at the end of the tribulation as found in Revelation chapter 19. Friend, people will be saved during that time. But let me make something explicitly clear. The majority of those saved during, if you may say, I'll just put it off, I'll get saved during the tribulation, I'm going to live it up, do what I want to do, be what I want to be. No, you won't. Because let me tell you what, you will believe a lie. And if you, if you are alive during the tribulation, friend, you will be deceived. And you will take the mark of the beast. And there will be no hope. The majority, if you read the book of Revelation, all 22 chapters, you will find that it is directed, it's about directed to the children of Israel, the Jews, about the fact of that Messiah that they were looking for will have come and offer them salvation. If you reject Jesus now, I firmly believe you will reject Jesus then because the events of the day will necessitate and dictate that you take the mark of the beast. The disciples asked when, when's this going to happen, Jesus? But Jesus wasn't about dates. He wasn't about specifying a date, but he was and still is about preparation Preparation to be ready for when this is coming. You must prepare, right? You must prepare. This world is marching towards its fiery end. Judgment is coming. Not because I say it's so, but because God's word declares so. There is a judgment day coming and we better thank God that he has extended grace and mercy that we can come to Christ and receive him. Thank God. The condemnation is lifted at the cross. Thank God you can be born again through the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. Thank God he made a way. He's a merciful God. Now notice something here. The structure of the passage. I only have 10 points. And I haven't even gotten to them yet. And you're saying help him Jesus. And help him quickly. The points are quick. So when we get to the points. You can breathe a sigh of relief. 
Jesus departed the temple and the temple sacrifice has now become obsolete because there's no longer the need of the blood of bulls and goats and turtle doves and blood of animals. Now the sacrificial blood will flow from Calvary's mountain where sinners plunge beneath that flood and all the guilt and stain is gone. So a disciple, he commented about the grandeur of Herod's temple and the size of these awesome stones. And you know, if you look at them historically, those stones are about the size of a railroad car, boxcar. Unbelievable, a massive structure. And in response, Jesus predicted that this description of this magnificent edifice that it will crumble. It will be destroyed. The disciples asked, when will the end come? You may be asking, so when is the end? It's not important when you know the end, for no man knoweth the hour nor the day, Jesus said, but only the Father. So beginning in verse 5, Jesus was telling them and telling us not to get off course. And friend, there is so much allurement, temptation, perversions out there today that can get you off course of where God wants you to be. The biggest threat to the church today is not being grounded. Grounded in the Word. Grounded in your salvation. Grounded in Christ today. Wars. Rumors of wars. Nations against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. Earthquakes. Famine. Church, churches today steeped in religion. That's driving people straight into the very bowels of hell. We're not saved by religion. We're saved by relationship. We're saved in the blood and the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's not a ritual. There's not a religion that will get you there. But the redemptive blood of Jesus will deliver you and set you free. Amen. Jesus said the gospel must be proclaimed to all countries, to all people, to all kindreds, to all tribes, to all nationalities. This is what we know as in the book of Matthew. You'll find what is called the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and to preach, to proclaim the message. Well, preacher, I guess that leaves us out and that means you, honey. Oh, I take to tell you this, friend. It means you too. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And the greatest way that we live out that ambassadorship is through our living every day of how we live for Christ. Because people are even seeing a double dose of Jesus in you or they see no Jesus in you. We are to serve God and to be faithful in all things to the kingdom of God. What would happen if the rapture would, would happen at high noon today about 12 or 14 minutes from now what would happen I pray this church would be emptied and it would be if you're in Christ and Christ is in you what would happen to those this morning that said I think I'm going to roll over instead of rolling out to church today I'm going to put this thing off. I know Jesus died for me. I know I need to get saved. But I got a lot more living to do. You're not living. You're dead in your sins, friend. As a matter of fact, you're dead in your trespasses, your iniquities, and your sins. The whole kit and caboodle, as the fellow said. You're dead. You're alive physically, but you're dead spiritually. What would happen today? If Jesus came back, I don't know. It could happen. He doesn't have to wait till high noon. He could come before the next tick of the clock. Or the next turn of the calendar. Or another day. Be prepared. Be ready. So Jesus said, when you find yourself in the seasons of suffering, know this, you have blessed assurance you don't stand alone when you stand with me. And whatever you're going through, maybe today you're going through some trials. 
This weekend has been a lot of things that have happened. We've heard the death of Cody. We've heard of the trials and the issues that are going on. We got folks in our church today that are not able to be here due to sickness and illness. Cindy is sitting over at uh, Pearson Center today because she can't even lift her arm. We just don't know. Suffering is a part of life. Trials are part of living. But I'm going to tell you something. And I'm basing this on my own life for a moment. I know what it is to go through physical trials. This past week, I was with Drew and Tiff for a few moments, and we was talking about my legs being a bilateral amputee. And Tiff, again, I don't have any pictures. She must have 5,000 pictures of me on her camera when I was in the hospital. And she showed me my legs. It started out with black streaks down my legs. And then my legs just literally turned black. My feet. She showed me my feet. They were black as night. And then my heels. And I was then at acute rehab walking in these shoe boxes that they gave me with a walker trying to learn to walk with the condition that I was in. And I was a mess. And my feet were breaking down and fluids were oozing out my heels. I didn't mean to make you sick. Enjoy your lunch later on. <laughs> and I would have a doctor come in oh, very early in the morning and say, we well, have to take you back to take your legs off. It's been a lot of suffering through that. I still suffer in a different way. You suffer. Some of you have been through horrendous trials, surgeries, operations, cancer. You've been through heart problems and difficulties. You're going through challenges with your children. You've got issues with your finances. You've got problems on your job. You've got issues at home. You've got issues everywhere you look. You turn on the news, which I don't even do anymore, and you see nothing but bad news. Well, listen, here's something that gives us good news. It's called the Word of God. Hallelujah. And you're sitting right in the middle today of the house of good news because we're here to proclaim not the condition of the world, but the God who will change the condition of your life and today deliver you. Because if when you stand with God and you believe the Word and you're a child of God, you've got a friend that will stay closer than a brother. You've got a deliverer. You've got a helper. You've got a God on your side. Amen. Praise God. Stand with Him. Stand for Him. Amen. Now the point's only ten of them. So when the end is near, get doctrinally strong. There's a lot of doctrine out there that is in error and is weak and does not agree with God's Word. There are so many perversions of the Bible. You mean versions, don't you? No, perversions. Because they have stripped the power of the blood, the name of Jesus. Be careful which Bible you're reading. Amen. No doctrine. Know what God's Word says. Know what you believe and why you believe it. When, when you realize this, I'm glad today in this church you get something that you can stand on. Music and message and fellowship. You get what's real. Don't, anyone, don't let anyone lead you astray. But preacher, you know, they've got churches over here. They've got massive crowds. And man, they've got all kinds of entertainment. And they even have coffee bars and donuts and Danish and everything. They, they will feed you. And they will take care of you. And they will lavish you. And it, it's a great entertainment. And you walk out just feeling so doggone good. So how many problems has all that feel good done to solving your problems in life? I'm not against church. I'm not against I'm not against fellowship. I'm not against church being on fire for God. 
We, we are a church that is on fire for God. And I believe that. And we want to grow bigger and better and greater to the kingdom of God. But let me tell you what. I don't have to come to church to be entertained. I don't have to have an entertainment, on, an entertainer on the platform to entertain me. I'd rather hear somebody sing Amazing Grace and be flat as a pancake and couldn't carry a tune in a bucket and didn't even have the bucket to carry it in. I'd rather hear them sing that and to hear somebody stand up here and they can hit every note with perfection and they got everything just in proper order but no spirit of God on them. That person stood up here and sang Amazing Grace, flat, and love Jesus. I'll take that any day over performance. So hallelujah. Let me ask you. Do you go to church for the performance? For the entertainment? Or do you go to church to serve Jesus? Amen. Hear the word. I heard it brother. Hear the word. Amen. And that's what we're here for. Don't let anyone stray you today. It's good for you to see the Old Testament prophecies as they fulfill what happens in the New Testament. You need to know the Christmas story about the birth of Jesus. For without the birth of Jesus, this great incarnation, there would not have been the death of Jesus and the atonement of our sins. You need to know His perfect life, His perfect teaching. You need to know the Sermon on the Mount found in the book of Matthew. You need to know, it is good for you to know what happened at the cross. You need to know the price that Christ paid. You need to know the suffering that He encountered. You need to know Jesus died for you in your place. It is good for you to know God has raised Jesus from the dead on the third day and then he ascended into heaven 40 days later and he is sitting at the Father's right hand right now and he is interceding for you and I and he left us with a promise that he would come again. We need to be doctrinally strong in the word. Secondly, as I get deeper, the points get shorter. When the end is near, don't be afraid. Fear. Fear has gripped the heart of most people on this earth. This would have been saturated, and you realize this world we live in right now is continually to be saturated with war and the issues of war. But don't let that worry you. There's war in the Middle East. There's war between Russia and the Ukraine. There's warfare on the streets of America in every town and city and country on this globe. But David said this in Psalm 34, 7 and 8. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Someone asked me this morning, what does it mean to have the fear of God? Does that mean you just shake all over? No, it means that you reverence and you respect God. The Lord encamp the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that that respect and revere him and deliver them. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or the person that trusts in him. Amen. Hallelujah. What are you trusting in? Joe? Donald? You'll put it together in a minute. What are you trusting in? Your banker? Joe, I mean Joe Biden and Donald Trump. You'll get it here in a minute. <laughs> Ding. Come on. I know some of you keep your nose in it all the time. You should have known that. What, what's controlling you today? What are you trusting in? What are you trusting? Well, I sure hope we get a president. Will be. Listen, friend, why are you trusting in a man when you put your trust in God? You put, in, you put it in God for salvation. Why can't you put it in God for every need in your life, every burden that you encounter, every trial that you go through, everything that you will ever face? Don't you believe that God is able to deliver you? Amen. Praise God. God's good sovereign hand covers us today. And works all things out in the events of history. 
God does that for his people. Blessed is a man who puts his trust in the Lord. Third, when the end is near, understand the curse. You need to understand when Adam and Eve sinned, sin disfigured what God had created and it disfigured their souls and it does to all. We're all disfigured. We're all hideous in sin. We're all tarnished and torn and doomed and condemned. The entire world was cursed. Just not Adam and Eve. Read your Bible. He also cursed, cursed the earth. He cursed the earth. All the horrific events that is in the world tells us there is an event on the way. And so this cursing makes us, then it draws our attention to look forward to the glorious day when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords comes and lifts the curse forever and ever. Amen. Fourth, keep a watch on your life. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. That doesn't mean today, don't drink that much beer tonight or that much whiskey or snort that much cocaine. No, you don't need any of that garbage to start with. If you're sober, it means you're alert. It means you know what's going on. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. How do you live a careful life. I've dropped, jotted down a couple bullets. You need a church around you. You really do. You need a church around you. There's going to be a time you're going to need the church. People who pray for you. People who care for you. People who help you. Amen. We are a family here. We are a fellowship. When one hurts, we all hurts, hurt. When one is going through trials and trouble, we go through that trouble with them. When one is getting something good and joyful, we joy with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We're a church. We care about one another. We love one another. We stand in the gap for one another. You need worship that is real. You need worship that is real. Real worship will give you strength. It will fortify you when you're facing this world and the things in this world. You've got to also confess your sins. For we all need God's forgiveness, don't we? We need the Bible. We need the power that is over all power. And that is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You need to get tougher. Bad days are ahead. Things are getting worse. And you've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, church. You need to be tough in your Christian view today. You need to be tough in your Christian stand. You don't need to be a compromiser. You don't need to fall by the wayside. You don't need to give up and quit. There's no room for compromise in the family of God. Hallelujah. We need strong contenders for the faith. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We need to adhere to what God has given us in His Word and live by the Word of God today. We need to be tough and kind also like Jesus. Jesus was tough. And if you've been around me for the last few weeks, He was tough on the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the scribes. He never compromised the word. And we need not to compromise. Let me tell you, when you compromise one time, when you make that slip, when you say, well, maybe, no, that's going to lead to destruction. Stand firm, fixed on your faith. Amen. Amen. Six, know your testimony. Hallelujah. Know your testimony. You should have one if you're in Christ. Amen. We'll bear witness for Christ daily in our lives. We need Christians that will hold their faith as a standard before others today. Paul said, 
I am not ashamed of the gospel. Stand firm on what you believe. Share that. You got a testimony. There's nothing better than boast on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, look what God has done for me. Look what God brought me out of. Look what God's brought me into. Look what God's taking me to. We need to know indeed. And others need to know your story, your testimony, and to let the world know you're not indeed ashamed of who lives within you. Seventh, we need to articulate the gospel. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It is so important that we share the gospel of Jesus today. The gospel is our story to tell and there is no greater story than the story of Jesus Christ. And it's a story that continues to live. Amen. And it's just not a story. It's a true account. Eight. Stop worrying. Some of you are sitting here this morning. And you are infested with worry. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you're born again. Get this in your soul. If you are born again. There is nothing to worry about. Amen. David said, I'm not seeing the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. God has never failed you. We try to get ahead of God, and that's the atmosphere and the environment that we create for worry. We cross bridges that we never have to cross. We worry about things that we don't have to worry about. We inundate ourselves, our time, our energy, and our efforts with worry. And then we're exhausted. Put your trust in the Lord and stop worrying. If you are consumed with worry, my question is this. Where is your faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. How can you please God when you are torn between worry? As a matter of fact, you're consumed with it. You're not torn. You're consumed with it. You fight anxiety with what you know in the fact of what you believe and that you are living clean for Jesus. You can find your worries melt away. One of the greatest ways is right here. In the pages of this book, there are 66 separate books in this book called the Holy Bible. Every chapter, every word, every verse, every place in this Bible, you'll find God is with you and for you. Whatever has got you worried today, let me tell you, why don't you just come today to these old-fashioned Holy Ghost-filled altars today. And that's right, Holy Ghost-filled altars. And come and fall before God and cast all you care upon Him and let God take your worry and give you victory and leave you with victory in Jesus today.